Hey guys, Zoliax here and welcome to a new Airlines Manager video. Uh, in this one I am comparing all the 737 aircraft. Uh, I've also thrown in a couple of the A320s in there. Uh, they are the aircraft, the A320s that I've used are the A321-200 and the A321-NEO because they the, were the two that uh, came out on top uh, when we did the A320 family comparison, so I've thrown them in there as well just to kind of see how they fare against the Boeing aircraft as their main rivals. So if I quickly swap over now to my wonderful spreadsheet, you know I love my spreadsheets if you've been watching my content regularly. Uh, so for this one I flew the route uh, Jakarta to Bangkok which for some of these aircraft was around well most of them is 8 hour flights return flights um, obviously the, the Maxes and the Neos were slightly faster so they were doing it in 7.45 or whatever 7.5 um, so for this uh, most of the aircraft I could run with their full seating capacity and still have space for cargo uh, you'll probably notice that the Max 8s and the 8-200s as well as the A321neos uh, I have run uh, two of each of those aircraft one of which will have maximum seating capacity and zero cargo and the other one I reduced the seating capacity to allow me to have the one cargo uh, I think for all of them it was 10 I'd have to reduce by yes it was but if you uh, have a look at so no, that way the uh, having 10 less seats but with the one cargo you were making marginally more money and that is mostly because uh, obviously you're earning less on your tickets but you do earn more through your ancillaries just because for whatever reason that one cargo generates a lot of ancillary re revenue which is something we like more money is better obviously uh, and yet again uh, as I did with the A321 or the A320 family uh, uh, result per seat um, obviously result per seat this one this is where this kind of skews the uh, uh, results ever so slightly for the Max 8, uh, 8 200 and the 321neo because obviously if it's got less seats because I've reduced the seating capacity to put the one cargo on it it's you know, gonna make less per seat, well, it's gonna make a lot more per seat because there are less seats and it made more money so it's gonna make the uh, the cargo 7378s look much better uh, and it will, and the ones that don't have cargo even worse um, but I do advise uh, for aircraft that um, at maximum seating capacity uh, won't allow you to add a cargo to always reduce your number of seats to add that one cargo if you are after the money obviously if you're playing for realism okay yeah in reality you actually would have some cargo in there um, but you might want to run your aircraft at maximum capacity anyway just because that's how you want to play again that is totally up to you uh, and again I've done uh, I've let the aircraft run continuously they have all done exactly the same number of flights um, tied up the cost of um, the maintenance and then I've done a cost per seat for the A check and the D check, uh, a result uh, over maintenance ratio, and then at the end just a number of flights to be fully cost recovered. Um, and so the main important one then is the lists that I've compiled from all that data. So on pure profitability without taking any maintenance into consideration whatsoever, this is the order you are looking at. So the 737-400 is the most profitable aircraft. Uh, this is obviously based on how much money it makes versus how much it cost originally. 
So obviously, if it makes more money and cost less originally, it would become more profitable. So it, this is kind of done as a percentage of the initial cost of the aircraft. As you can see, apart from the 737-300, the older generation are better. Then you get into the slightly newer ones, the 737-800s and the 900ERs. A321-200 is kind of nicely sandwiched in the middle. And then you're looking at the Neo and all the maxes at the bottom it comes to profitability but as we know aircraft require maintenance so this is a uh, cost of maintenance per seat um again the one obviously the cargo um, aircraft because there's less seats uh it costs more per seat because it's less often so but you can kind of ignore the cargo ones really for this as you can see the you know, the cargoes are always by the one or two below the uh, normal one but in cheapest to maintain per seats obviously the newer generations uh, do quite well here because their maintenance uh, even though the aircraft costs more their maintenance obviously costs more but because they wear so much slower um, it does have some benefits. Uh, so this is primarily in the A check market, though, where this happens. When you look at the D checks, apart from the A300s, because it just seems Airbus do seem to be a lot better on the D checks than the Boeing's anyway. But if you look solely at the Boeing's, you can see the A3, the 737, 900s, 400. 800, 600, 700, 500 there, and the maxes are right at the bottom of both D checklists. So the reason why I've separated these out into A check and D checks, um, the most cost effective way to maintain your aircraft in professional mode is to carry out an A check only servicing, so you should only ever do A checks. When your aircraft reach 10-15% um, wear rate, a wear percentage carry out an A check uh, and in Tycoon mode uh, D checks are the most efficient or cost effective way to maintain your fleet normally a D check every four or five days will be enough to keep you uh, incident free uh, this is just because uh, the time it takes for an A check and D check to be carried out is exactly the same in professional as it is in tycoon mode but obviously in tycoon every the actual game is playing at seven times faster so uh, if a d check if a d check takes 24 hours to complete in professional mode that's only one day whereas in tycoon mode that takes seven days which means you've got seven times as much time within that uh, where your aircraft are wearing away so i've done extensive check tests on that um, which is far too complicated for me to put into a table and I can't be bothered to redo that test to gather the data again but just trust me that yeah, for professional mode A check only, Tycoon mode D check only. So if we look at the A checks then for professional mode 321 Neos are at the top and the Maxes are up there, the Dash 900 ER is up there uh, AV21 nicely sandwiched in the middle and then you get to the older generation ones near enough in order uh, and then if you look at the aircraft results uh, to maintenance like ratio so I've taken the um, this goes for the result per seat uh, over the A check or D check per seat it's going to be a little ratio uh, obviously for 737, 700 and 800 were very close so I had to go to an extra decimal point on that one um, so yeah so for the HX yeah, you want to be looking at the newer generation aircraft uh, if you're in professional mode uh, the 321neo came out on top uh, then the max 8200 737900ER then the max 9 max 8 a 321 200 737 800 700 600 400 500 300 they're almost in order there. Right, as for Tycoon mode, uh, 
the A321 Neos do well. Uh, the A321 200 again uh, also goes well. So Airbus definitely trumping Boeing here. Um, I know the Neo has topped this, and the A321 200 is further down there, and then it's there in order. Oh, no, cancel. They're in order there, but I have put the A321 200 above the A321 Neo. Uh, in my overall conclusion well, that is because if you recall or if you have watched my A320 family video uh, in that test the A321-200 came out fairly significantly higher up than the A321-NEO um, I don't think uh, it, it really does depend on the route that you're flying um, there's not a huge difference between them but usually the 321-200 comes out above the NEO. Um, then you get into the newer generation of the 737s, uh, the pre-max 737, so the 900ER uh, is up there, uh, the 600, the 400, the 700, the 800, and then the older generations, the 500 and the 300. And then the Max 9, the Max 8 200, and the Max 8. So if you're in tycoon mode, as much as the Max 8s are you know, the new thing um, at the moment, or the Maxes in general, uh, they're not the most profitable of aircraft. So I obviously only advise you use those the Max aircraft if you are playing for more towards the realism side of it rather than profit making. Um, so yeah, my, these overall conclusions are purely for profits. Uh, if you're wanting to keep to a realistic fleet and keep profits going, you're going to want to look at the A321neo um, as your first choice. But if you are a player who wants to have an airline uh, with an all Boeing fleet then the Max 9 will be your first choice to go to for profitability. Likewise in the professional mode the A321neo will be your go to for realism Max 8 200 will be your next go to and then this, the Max 9 and Max 8 don't think there was a massive difference between those two um, yeah, the Max 9 and Max 8 there the Max 9 is just over the Max 8 overall for professional mode. Uh, so yeah, professional mode is a lot easier for you to be more realistic just because with an all A check maintenance schedule the newer aircraft do tend to perform better. Um, yeah, that's going to be it for this video. Uh, I hope that's been helpful for you um, comparing the 737 uh, family. Uh, obviously with the couple of A321s chucked in there for comparison. Uh, so yeah, it does seem that within the game, uh, Airbus just about seem to be slightly better than their Boeing counterparts. Uh, I do have another video coming out, uh, hopefully in the next day or two. Um, I'm basing that on cargo, uh, comparison of cargo aircraft, so I've got the the 747 freighters, um, the 777 freighter, and I've also got a comparison then with the long haul passenger aircraft running at full cargo. So like an A380 with full cargo, uh, 350 at full cargo, 747-8i at full cargo, that kind of thing. But that'll be coming out tomorrow, hopefully. Uh, but yeah. Thanks for watching everybody, uh, if you've liked the video please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for my future content uh, and I will catch you again next time, so thanks for watching, see you again soon.